Hey YouTube. So it's been a while. We have a lot of comments, reviews of what is consisted in this lab and the noise levels and things like that. So we will kind of show everything. But first starting from like the noise level, just so you guys can see, door will close. Pretty minimal. And I have a uh, AC Infinity right here, duct in line, which is just blowing cooler air down into the front of the rack. So it kind of recirculates the air instead of keeping it congested. So uh, yeah, let's begin. So the top of the rack we have here, uh, a 3750X. This switch is for all edge devices, computers, printers, desk, laptops, wireless access points. These two are for the Ubiquiti Nano HD uh, Wi-Fi 6. They're pretty decent uh, APs. So that's what I have those two uplinks for and dedicated on a VLAN. These are for all the desktops, which I have more rooms in the house, but there's no devices to keep propagating more ports. Uh, we have a dual LACP lag from my Arista coming into here. And now into this project upgrading, I have two Arista switches that I'm actually creating an M-Lag between each one to kind of create more density. So we have a Dell EMC 3330. This is a PFSense box. It is has two SSDs. It runs around 54 watts. I always, no matter idle or peak usage, the CPU is uh, version 5 Intel Xeon, I can't remember the exact model name. It has, uh, I think, 16 or 32 gigs of RAM, which is more than plenty. And it runs very smooth. So I've seen a lot of people talk about this, saying high power usage, which is actually incorrect. 54 watts, kind of almost the power of like, a uh, little Optiplex or something like that. So pretty good usage. And then here we have our first uh, vSync node. So first disk for ESXi. So with version 7.0.3 or later, now you have to cannot use SD drives or flash drives. You actually have to use a disk, SATA or SSD, uh, or SAS spindle or SATA spindle. Either one's fine. But right now, I have a 400 gig uh, SATA SSD and then 800 gig SAS drives. And um, these servers can't handle a Intel boss, uh, boss cards for Dell EMC, the Intel SSDs. It's only for the 14th gen servers. So this one here, it just seems to be the way it is. And the next server, same, same exact thing. We have a disk same capacity they're all identical they have intel xeon e5 2680v fours two in each server same thing with this one identical uh this, this next one here is a network attached storage slash sam so it's an r740 currently right now it's running windows server uh i had zfs before freenas and all that kind of stuff but Sometimes the disks will go not happy and saying there's a bad sector for one disk and it'll just keep alarming. For right now, one disk is not going to cause any issues. There's a lot of backups. So I'm using uh, Windows Server for that reason to kind of get rid of the annoying alarms. Even though I can suppress them, but I kind of want to just have an easier way of man managing storage. So we have all 10 terabyte disks in here. Uh, there are uh, Seagate. Uh, Iron Wolf Heliums and uh, has 64 gigs of RAM, two Intel sil Silvers, I think it's 4108 or 4180, can't remember the model number off in my head. So we have uh, two uplinks into here. We have a, a 40 gig dedicated for network attached storage, and then I'm working on getting another dedicated 40 gig uh, for iSCSI, so that way there is separation. So right now everything is separated by, the, by a VLAN and a routing, so kind of want to have a layer two instead of trying to do over, thing over layer three for iSCSI. And then I just have uh, USB drives connected and just copying data and stuff like that. So 
These two are for uh, just regular data. Uh, and then here we have an external copy for uh, Commvault. I have Commvault backing up this environment. So we have repository going into here, which is our primary and the secondary, which is here. So I could take this and I could rebuild the whole lab. But actually on a side note, I am working on a project building a R740 with uh, 40 terabytes right now and we are doing a DR setup. Can lose my screws. I can show you guys. So right now we have four discs that are 10 terabyte enterprise drives. We've got a pretty good deal on eBay. So these drives will also be, this one actually will be running a TrueNAS. That way I'm gonna have uh, ZFS take care of all the storage and parity and all the data. And then on the back over here, open it up, I have SSDs. I got 960 gig SSDs for caching and more maybe the operating system, we'll see. But I'm building this uh, 740 ground up so I'm getting all the pieces and requirements piecing it together making a little fun little project so you guys can see uh, right now I have a single uh, HBA 330 I'm gonna have two of them so one will be for the rear discs and one will be for the front discs so that way it's a pure uh, HBA driven topology this will have one Intel Silver, uh, actually not Silver, Intel Bronze, and it has a 32 gig, 2666 megahertz stick. So yeah, it's a little project I'm working on. Here is the Connect X3X 40 gig card, which this one will have embedded into this unit. But yeah, there's that part. So now we're gonna go back to the lab. Okay, so now we're here back on the front side. Uh, we have a 730. These I'm actually going to keep. So my project is on getting four 740s, the small version, the extra drive version of a two and a half inch, so I can replace these three nodes and do a four node VSAN cluster. Uh, this will actually help me create a lab and a pod environment so I can create. A lot of cool instructional videos, how to's, because right now with a nested environment, it's kind of hard with the research constraints because one terabyte is a lot, but not enough for what we're trying to do here. So, but yeah, so that's what that is. And then here, this is my VDI node. Uh, it's a 740, it has two Intel Xeon uh, Golds. So, this primarily runs all the virtual machines for VDI. Uh, it's not vSAN, it's just a standard uh, node. With, it does did have a Tesla v, uh, v M60 in it, but I have, it ran into issues, so I had to return it. But I'll get another one. So that's the front of the rack, kind of giving an idea, explanation, so people can see what everything is. Um, so now we have the power. We have two UPSs. And a lot of people ask what's the power usage. So there's your load. It's fairly a pretty good amount of load. I can get two more uh, UPSs because these circuits that I have on the wall here, two uh, 20 amps, so I can have more stuff hooked up. Just gotta get more UPSs to expand the capacity. But now we'll go to the back of the rack. So now we're here back at the rack, uh, a little toasty. Uh, we have a uh, duct system that takes the hotter out. So before, if I turn this off and there was no ducting before in the back of the rack, it was 105 to 110 degrees. Right now it's probably around 85, 90, which I can show you guys on the uh, thermometer that I have. So there's the back of the 3750X. Uh, I have a second power supply, but I'm using it for uh, another switch. But later I'll put it back in. We have the PFSense box, which is the back of the 330. We have an uplink for the, the DIT Arista switch, right down below over here. I'll show you guys in a second. And then a lot of people you've asked, 
what is uh, all these interfaces. So we have a 40 gig dedicated uh, for vSAN, 40 gig dedicated for management, but also we have uh, 10, 4, 10 gigs allocated for the overlay so that way I can actually have a separation between my overlay and my traditional networking. So all my iSCSI and everything flows over on top of these ones, whereas this is primarily for all for the NSX overlay. And then each server is identical and all that. And then here is the dedicated 40 gig for uh, did NAS and SAN right now. But well, the project we're now working on is actually uh, making this dedicated for iSCSI only. So that way there's a separation for iSCSI instead of me doing by VLANs. So, but there's that. And there's all my uh, power supply, everything. So here I have my uh, management switch. So out of band management, everything is connected to here. I have, that is what you saw the yellow cable up front. That was for the uplink. I'm actually working on trying to figure out which transceivers work for uh, the switch, but they're kind of being a pain. Got plenty of QSFPs to play with, things like that. So, and then here we go. We have uh, the uplink for uh, from the firewall PFSense. So this is the PFSense uplink right here. And then here's a lag created for uh, the, the, two, the switch up top for the, the load that it goes through since having redundant is always good. And so you guys can see here that I'm actually doing a dedicated 40 gig. So I'm not breaking out the cable. So you can see the green light, the rest is yellow. I'm actually forcing the speed to go to 40 gig. There are some here that I have breakout cables. There are some uh, interfaces right there. You can see them all lit up. And then here I have my uplinks for like other environments. And then this is the switch I am working on to get uh, my MLAG set up. This is my second Arista. This will actually be uh, feeding more density for servers and expansion kind of doing a more redundant setup because before I was only having one switch but now since I fixed this switch I'm going to set up two of them uh, they're both the same model the only difference is this one has four additional 10 gigs and this one doesn't so we're doing that we might do some kind of spider leaf setup later down the road but for right now this is pretty much it so yeah So yeah, that's pretty much the end of the video, kind of like showing the whole topology. And then here is the duct line fan coming in. And then here's the temperature in the back of the rack. And then the temperature in the front where the cooler actually is being cooler air into the front of the rack. So yeah, little overview, a little bit longer video kind of explaining what is what to show people how it's set up and yeah stay tuned and share subscribe